And the Oracle is known as a blockchain middleware as they bridge the real world onto the blockchain. They will unlock the full potential of a smart contract. Seems simple enough though, but there are crucial pieces to understand. So let's dive right in. Uh, to start with, can you explain uh, what Acrest is? Yeah, happy to. Um, so Acrest essentially is um, a platform that enables developers to bring off-chain data and computation to the Web3 world. So this means that, um, for example, for use cases such as um, price feeds that are required uh, by a DeFi platform, you can utilize Acris to um, gather the Bitcoin USD price, for example, and then bring this in a verifiable manner uh, towards uh, your DeFi application. And there are numerous other um, use cases that um, Acris covers, such as like verifiable randomness for like GameFi or, or NFTs. Um, and in the end, uh, what Acris uh, allows developers to do is completely define their requirements um, in code. So this means uh, they can perform computation that are off-chain, um, fetch uh, or essentially call APIs. So it's essentially a limitless uh, possibilities of um, the data that can be accessed, accessed and the computation that can be done through Acrest for the various applications. Uh, on your website, it is written that uh, Acrest is reimagined the uh, uh, concept of bringing off-chain data uh, on-chain. So what's the concept you have reimagined? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that's, a, that's a good question. I mean, if, if you think about um, kind of um, essentially how data is being transported or used in like the Web2 world, if you build an application there, um, you utilize like APIs to, to fetch certain data that is uh, provided by someone else. And here in um, the, the Web3 world, um, there is no kind of trustless approach uh, directly built in into the protocol. So what this means is um, we are providing with Acrest uh, an approach that allows um, essentially this trustlessness um, to, to become true um, so that in the end uh, you can transport data from the Web2 world that might be a price on a, a centralized exchange. So originating um, from there essentially to, to the um, Web3 world. Mm. Um, you know, we got a lot of uh, conceptual pieces here. <laughs> you know, it's Oracle, <laughs> but they are really important yes. to understand, you know, to to in order to get the value of Oracle and uh, Acrest. So what are the advantages of using a blockchain Oracle? <laughs> yes, so I mean, in general, if we are um, looking um, at Acrest itself, what the, the advantages are um, that it, it brings is essentially um, kind of a few core concepts um, that, that come with it. So on one hand, um, it's kind of uh, important to understand um, how the data is, is being communicated to uh, towards a Web3 ecosystem. So this is some kind of um, uh, piece of infrastructure that essentially allows this. So what I could do uh, if I build a DeFi project and I need a price for, for um, dots in, in USD, for example, I can just build a simple service um, that uh, calls an API from like um, Binance uh, or uh, Kraken or Coinbase or any API and then uh, pushes this to my smart contract if I, for example, build on, on Moonbeam, right? But what this essentially means is that um, if I have a lot of value um, that is uh, within this smart contract and in the end um, kind of maintained or controlled by the price that comes of my through my Oracle, um, and this is very heavily reliant and, and centralized on me kind of being able to run this service and not manipulating the, the output. Because if I can manipulate a price, for example, on a DeFi platform, then I gain access to, um, for example, uh, examples collateral that I should not uh, be able to gain access. So it's important that um, an, an approach to, to transport the, uh, the data um, is 
trustless. So this means that we don't rely on an individual party or like parties um, of multiples that have the ability to collude and kind of make a big impact uh, in my smart contract in the Web3 world. So with, with Acarist, um, we solved this approach by um, introducing trusted execution environments um, that are essentially giving us the, the capability of um, providing an infrastructure um, where the um, processing happens. And this is in a, happens in a way that um, is um, temper resistant so that no one maliciously, not even the, the data transmitters, how we call uh, them, can change um, what is essentially happening within this trusted execution environment. And we end up essentially with an approach that uh, the output um, of, uh, for example, fetching price feeds is completely verifiable then on chain. So you have the, the trustless um, approach uh, for this, this transporting of, of data. Uh, do you think that is the technology behind blockchain oracles mature? And uh, how, would it, how would it be involving and bring new opportunities and new narratives in, in the future? Yes, um, that's a that's a very good question, and I uh, two twofold uh, question. I mean, in, in terms of security, um, it definitely um, depends on how kind of the um, project um, is built up that allows you to get access to like Oracle capabilities. So, like I've, I've mentioned in in the example, right, um, where you have just one party pushing uh, data into a, a, a smart contract then there you have kind of a, a huge security risk right of uh, this this party essentially uh, manipulating certain things so this is, is was important for us when we um, set out to to build Acris that um, security uh, around this approach is, uh, is is a given right it's not just like an assumption that um, okay i need to trust uh, this the, these parties uh, if they uh, don't collude, then I'm secure. But here we have essentially um, with, with Acris the, the trust in technology and, and cryptography because we have in the end the, this verifiable um, approach of processing these these off-chain uh, data jobs in, in the end. And I think this is, is uh, like I've said, depends a bit on, on which spectrum you are um, in, in terms of if you're looking at a uh, blockchain um, oracles uh, in, in, in general, they can be very simple, but um, uh, have a lot of security impacts or they can have um, like a, a solution like Acarist um, that is technically sound and does not rely um, essentially on one party because um, in, in Acarist, in the end, anyone that has the required hardware um, can become uh, a data transmitter. So it's an, an open platform. And maybe on, on this, the, the other side of the, the question, um, when you are thinking about kind of what um, oracles or what off-chain computation essentially can enable, um, this is very interesting to uh, take us a bit of a like broader look, looking a bit further away. Um, so nowadays, um, what we definitely see is kind of where um, kind of this capability is used is yeah, within uh, DeFi, um, within um, NFTs and, and GameFi, uh, where you have kind of these, these examples of price feeds or verifiable randomness. But um, we, um, for from the perspective of, of Acrist, um, definitely also see that um, there are a lot of uh, use cases that uh, essentially can be realized if the, the given infrastructure um, that, that Acrist provides is, is there. So what this means is that we see that, um, for example, Acris comes with um, with a marketplace uh, that brings together um, the data transmitter, which are the infrastructure provider, um, on one side, with the developers um, on the other side that have the requirement for um, off-chain data or or computation, and this marketplace can be used essentially also for. Um, enterprises, for example, that don't have any exposure to the, the Web3 world um, to, and a lot of these enterprises have like highly dedicated um, data um, collected from like uh, various um, aspects, like uh, highly um, localized weather data, 
because uh, a telecommunication company has antennas somewhere. Um, so what we can, what we see is that, and we have also had a lot of conversations with enterprises, is that um, they can leverage the, the Acris marketplace and uh, kind of find a new revenue stream for their data and offering that data to developers in the, the Web3 space. Mm -hmm. it, you know, there are a lot of use cases and uh, how would the uh, Acris project compare to its competitors such as the uh, Chainlink and so on? Yes, th that's a good question. I, and I think it's always um, fair to, to look at um, other projects um, as well in, in the, the ecosystem as well. Um, I think one of the, um, the, the advantages when looking at the Dotsami ecosystem is that um, Acarist uh, supports also um, parachain. So there is a parachain, this means there is a, an Acarist palette uh, that can be integrated um, in a, a substrate based chain and uh, there the output of um, the data transmitters can be directly consumed um, but if you look broadly more broadly at the the ecosystem um, one of the the value proposition that uh, Acris definitely has is uh, that we are building on um, these trusted uh, execution uh, environments that essentially give us on one hand um, a verifiable approach um, of processing data um, but also um, essentially give the power um, to the developers because um, they are in the driver's seat to define uh, what um, is being run in this uh, trusted execution environment. So this means that um, you as a developer, um, if you uh, need support for um, new assets, for example, um, you can just create this in, a, in, uh, in, in code. So it's, for example, JavaScript, um, and then um, go to the, the Acris marketplace and um, create essentially an Acris job there that is then being pick up, picked up by, um, by data transmitters. And there is also another differentiator that, uh, that uh, Acris essentially has is the self-service approach, right? It's not um, that uh, if, we, if someone wants to be onboarded um, as a developer to, to Acris, that um, they need to come to us and say, hey, look, um, I want to have uh, verifiable random numbers for my NFT drop. Um, how am I going to do this? But it's completely on, like, on the opposite, right? They define the requirements, they go to the marketplace, and then it's automatically being picked up by, by data transmitters. And as well by the, the data tr transmitter side of things, um, it takes like five minutes to uh, be, be set up as a data transmitter um, to join essentially the, the Acrest marketplace and to start for fulfilling jobs that are um, provided by, by the developers. So you have the, the self-service uh, approach that then also um, goes into the, the trustlessness of, um, of all things. And last but not least, um, Acrest uh, focuses on uh, interoperability and has this built in uh, the core. So the, the Acris protocol um, lives in uh, the, the Dotsama ecosystem. There will be a, a Kusama parachain, which uh, will see the testnet, uh, the incentivized testnet of Acris, and then later on um, a, a parachain on, on Polkadot. But um, Acris is not limited to um, communicate only with um, parachains in the Dotsama ecosystem it's also possible to communicate to EVM chains, um, to uh, chains like Tezos and, and uh, to the Cosmos ecosystem, for example. So, I mean, to, to summarize, I think on one hand, the, the interoperability uh, um, is definitely a differentiator that we, we um, are seeing, um, the self-service approach and the uh, generic um, kind of um, capabilities that uh, the trusted execution environments bring us. Okay. Even though with the uh, great intentions, we have seen, uh, but we also have seen cases where oracles are hacked or, and uh, a catastrophe has ensued. So how do you view the security issues surrounding blockchain oracles? And, uh, you know, how do you ensure the privacy of data? 
Yes, th that, that's a, a very good question. And I think it, it goes also back to what I've mentioned about the architecture that is being chosen um, for a specific Oracle. Um, with Acrest, we have uh, this, this verifiable approach, um, which means that in the end, everyone can verify um, what the, the data transmitter has computed given uh, a, a certain script that has been provided by uh, the developer. So you have uh, kind of at the core of, of the, the Acrest protocol, you have this verifiability, which then guarantees um, security in, in terms of uh, manipulation um, uh, of like the, the processing that is happening uh, in on the Oracle side of things. And um, privacy is another interesting thing um, that we can actually um, enable uh, through Acrest is that we can, um, if we, we have the case of an enterprise that has a certain data set um, that is like highly specified data that they probably don't want to just uh, sell a data dump um, of, of this like um, uh, data block that they have, but uh, they rather um, give access to specific um, requests. So this means that um, the developer asks for, um, if you have KYC, for example, um, ask, is this um, user uh, a Chinese citizen, for example? And the, the um, Oracle then through this KYC provider just provides the, the answer, yes or no. So you have the, this privacy preserving mechanism built into um, into Acrest as well that allows for use cases uh, like this where you don't completely expose um, all of the data uh, to the public. Uh, how do you, you know, how, uh, how to say, uh, why do you choose Polkadot, you know? Uh, does Polkadot empowers your project in a way that and other projects uh, are not capable of. Yeah, th th that's interesting. We we looked at uh, the, the whole Web3 ecosystem, and I think um, we've had uh, experience uh, previously with, with uh, um, Polkadot, uh, Cosmos, and, and other like chains um, like Tesos. And what uh, stood out of uh, of like the research that we have done and why we are building uh, on Polkadot is definitely, um, on one hand, the approach that uh, Substrate gives us. So we don't want to build, uh, or we didn't want to build Acrest on top of another like um, chain as a, a smart con contract implementation, because um, there are a lot of things that we are doing that would be way too expensive in terms of like storage and, and uh, capacity um, through these smart contracts. Um, and we don't want to rely on this underlying layer um, in terms of like block production, for example, right? If there is um, a block congestion, for example, on these chains, then the um, data that, that we are processing off chain and we want to bring it on chain suddenly cannot reach, um, for example, our smart contracts anymore. And that's not a feasible um, approach for, for us. And the um, ability that Substrate essentially gives us uh, through various pallets, which um, are already battle tested, um, that we can pick from, that was definitely another um, advantage that we have seen. But in the end, we were able to implement the, the logic um, completely based for for the um, off-chain uh, data use case, right? So it was, um, uh, yeah, we, we gained the, the capabilities and essentially to completely customize what um, uh, based on, on our requirements. Mm. Uh, there are already a lot of great uh, ap applications of, uh, you know, using oracles. Uh, for example, the World Cup and the, the, the gaming. So, yeah. How do you assess a, a application? That's interesting to kind of think about it, right? Um, I mean, one advantage usually if you're looking at projects in the Web3 space is that most of them um, are open source in some form. So you have the, the capabilities of uh, looking um, essentially at the code, but obviously this requires uh, knowledge in, in, in uh, Kind of yeah in in the various languages the the application is written and that's not something that 
um, is possible for like any user, right? So you need uh, to have uh, a kind of background, a technical background to, to be able to assess this. So I think what is important is that there's also um, kind of name recognition being built around, for example, Acrest as, as a brand of um, having these um, primitives of being um, trustless, being um, verifiable and, and being secure um, so that also others kind of get the understanding that if a project builds on top of uh, Acrest and utilizes it, then this is essentially what, what the, the um, kind of off-chain computation part of it stands for um, as well. What's your favorite uh, um, use cases of Oracle? <laughs> that, that's a good question. I think what, what is interesting um, for, for me um, now at this stage um, is like getting the, the ability to um, access data such as like um, the results of sports games, like the, the results of the, the Super Bowl, right? You can, you don't have um, access uh, to that data um, if you're building on a smart contract, if you're not using um, a solution like Acris that can transport this uh, to to effectively your, your application, right? So building um, applications that kind of leverage this um, approach is definitely very, uh, very interesting for, for me. Um, but what where I see a lot of potential is what I've touched on before, right? Enabling um, so enterprises uh, that don't really um, are aware of like Web3 at the moment or the, the capabilities that, that uh, Web3 um, kind of can offer them. So this is something that is very interesting for me to bring kind of the Web3 world uh, essentially also to these, these enterprises and kind of make them realize um, what they can, can or how they can leverage uh, the, the, uh, the Web3 world. And, uh, you know, uh, from your perspective and your experience, and uh, what do you think is the bottleneck of uh, the, the Oracle nowadays? I think, um, if you're looking at the space um, in, in general, um, I would say one of the bottlenecks is kind of the limitations, what you can do with um, with an Oracle, right? So what this means is, um, yes, we, we are focusing on price sheets. Uh, yes, uh, there, there is a focus on like this verifiable randomness uh, because uh, smart contracts and, and protocols um, don't have true true randomness. but kind of enabling developers um, to completely build for their use cases is something that uh, I think is is lacking um, at the moment. And this is what, what Acris brings. And I, I'd like to make the, the analogy there um, uh, as well uh, in, in terms of if you think about kind of um, Bitcoin and, and Ethereum, so the, the evolution, um, Bitcoin is like a, a ledger you have limited uh, capabilities with Bitcoin script to code certain logic into it. And then um, Ethereum came along with smart contracts that completely opened up new use cases, right? You saw the rise of like DeFi, of, of NFTs, of various other projects that were kind of enabled through the capabilities of this virtual machine where you could build uh, smart contracts. And if you think about it, if you get this capabilities now with um, off-chain computation um, where you can completely as well, again, as a developer uh, code your requirements and, and have this run in uh, like a trustless uh, um, infrastructure, then this opens up so much more use cases um, down the road uh, as, as well. So this is something that is very exciting to see kind of uh, in, in terms of, of an evolution perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Oracle is very conceptual <laughs> and uh, for normal users, it's hard for them to understand. So uh, do you have some rec uh, recommendation, recommendation of uh, books or, uh, you know, authors or some blogs for normal users to learn about Oracle? Yeah, so I think for for a, a normal user, maybe to, to answer it a bit differently, I think to understand um, it a bit more is kind of having it as a, a bridge 
between like you have the the web two world uh, on on one side and and the the web three world on another right and they don't have like a native inherent way of uh, communicating with with each other so the the oracle is essentially the enabler to kind of build this bridge between the web two world and and the web three world and transport um kind of data points from one side to to the other right so you have essentially the, the bridge building between um these these two worlds i think this is something that um probably summarizes it a bit better um i don't think uh kind of as a normal user you probably need to to understand uh, or read books uh, about um, um, oracles um in the end this is also kind of um an adoption question right um you kind of want to interact with an application and don't really bother with like what the underlying uh, infrastructure uh, looks like uh, you want to be safely interacting with this application and not um, due to an oracle fault for example uh, lose access to to funds uh, that you um, use to to interact with this platform so i think it should be way more abstracted from from like a, a, a normal user um, they should not be be um, confronted with this but um, I mean, definitely, if you're interested uh, to to read more about uh, things that enable oracles like trusted execution environments and, and stuff like that, there's a, a lot of research also um, uh, referenced in in our docs um, that uh, points to this. Last, uh, let's share about some uh, you know the future outlook of a uh, yes a careers. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, very very much happy to. So. Um, we are currently actively um, uh, developing um, essentially the marketplace capabilities the, that I've mentioned. Um, so uh, enabling this way to have this self-service uh, approach between the data transmitters and the um, data consumers. Um, what we're doing at the moment as well is onboarding um, projects. Um, so the, the data con consumers or developers, um, this is something that we are actively doing. Uh, at this stage, as well as um, initial data transmitters. Um, so we have uh, a lot of great infrastructure providers uh, like Iceberg Nodes, Mayhem Nodes. Um, there are companies like Taurus, for example, um, that are uh, participating already as data transmitters for Acris. And we are looking um, to, to onboard more of, of these infrastructure providers. Um, as a matter of fact, we have um, a webinar on the 23rd of uh, February, that kind of dives more uh, deeper into what it means to, to become a data transmitter. Um, but then on a more kind of uh, broader um, view, um, we are uh, anticipating the launch of the um, incentivized test nets um, as Acrest uh, becomes a, a parachain on Kusama. So that is definitely uh, on, uh, an immediate next step uh, on our roadmap. Um, with essentially uh, then launching the capabilities of the the Acrest marketplace um, for for like uh, testing and, and everything around that, so that is definitely uh, very exciting. Uh, and then a bit later in the year, um, we are targeting um, the launch of Kusa uh, uh, of Acrest as a Polkadot parachain, um, which then also sees the launch of the the productive marketplace. Um, and then further uh, down the road as well, integrations with uh, other ecosystems like Cosmos, for example, um, so that uh, you, you get the, the ability to kind of uh, leverage Acrest uh, in, in the Cosmos ecosystem as well. Um, we are, as a matter of fact, uh, have today uh, looked at uh, a prototype that, that we have built um, to uh, enable support for, for EVM chains. Um, so that is also very exciting. Um, but yeah, definitely the um, Kusama launch uh, and, and the marketplace on there is the, the immediate next step, as well as all the onboarding of uh, data consumers and data transmitters. Amazing. Uh, as our interview drawing to the end, anything you would like to remark or uh, add? So, I mean, definitely, yeah. If, if you um, are building in the, the Web3 world and you kind of have this challenge of how do I get um, access to off-chain data um, like price feeds or you need computation 
um, then definitely reach out to us. Um, we we are happy to to have a chat and see how you can um, leverage Acurist. Um, as a uh, you can also join um, Acurist essentially as a data transmitter um, and uh, profit from the revenue that that you can generate through that. Uh, so you can also look out uh, to our social channels um, for that. And yeah, down the road with the launch of the, the power chains, there will also be um, staking capacities um, and, and things like that. So um, if, if you're interested uh, to learn more, um, join our social channels. We, we are happy to answer all the, the questions that you have. Yeah, thank you so much for your time today. And uh, I think that's all for our interview today and uh, hope uh, in the future and uh, we can cooperate more and uh, help help your project you know to be exposure to our community yes definitely i mean thank you so much for for having me i'm um, happy to to have another conversation and yeah also uh, be be further uh, embedded in, in the community as well <laughs>